Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about yet another really weird star that, as you can probably tell from the title, spins really, really fast. Now, you can probably imagine what happens if you spin really fast, but let's talk about this scientifically and let's go and explore that star. Welcome to What the Math. So, somewhere out there, which I'm going to show you where actually, um, is a star that is spinning around its axis so fast that it's barely keeping together. So, if it was actually spinning even faster, in other words, if it was just a little bit faster in terms of its rotation, it would totally just fall apart. But it's just under that limit. And if we were to compare this star's rotation to our own sun, it's about 100 times faster giving it an actual equatorial velocity of approximately 600 kilometers per second. That is just insane. On top of this, this particular star is also about 25 times the mass of our own sun. So it's massive, it spins ridiculously fast, and as you can imagine, produces a tremendous amount of energy and also magnetic field. The magnetic field around the star is probably several thousands times more powerful than our own sun which also means there's a lot of crazy effects going on there. Let's go and find it. Um, I'm going to actually just show you where it's located. I need to kind of look for it uh, for a few seconds. And I think I'm actually looking the wrong direction here. It's uh, in the famous uh, galaxy we've talked about many times, the Large Magellanic Cloud, which I'm having trouble seeing here. Let's just point at it so we can find it easier. Right there. So, uh, this galaxy is about 160,000 light years away from our own galaxy, and it has a, a lot of stars that are record holders. It has the most massive star, it has the hottest star, it also has the brightest and most powerful nebula in it. There's a lot of records here. And now we have another record to add, the fastest spinning star. It's located in just the same region of space where all of those other record holders are, and if you don't really know what I'm talking about, check out some of the videos that I made previously about stars like R136 um, and R136A1 specifically. Now, deep inside this cloud lies a star known as VFTS102. I'm probably not going to be able to find it this way, but it is somewhere in this nebula known as the Tarantula Nebula. Now, just looking at it, you're not going to see anything different. It's basically a massive star, 25 masses of, of our own sun, very bright, very powerful, spins pretty fast. But I think it's more important to actually explain why it's spinning so fast. So let's go to Universe Sandbox for a second and recreate what this star might actually look like. So this is just a simulation of what it might appear as, because we know that it's a very bright, very uh, massive star. And it's also spinning relatively fast, but this is not in real time. In real time, it actually would not look any different uh, because of the size of the star. So this is actually about as real time as I'll get. Uh, so as you can see here, you don't really see it, but on the equator, it's actually moving at 600 kilometers per second. And so just to make it more dramatic, let's accelerate time a little bit. So how was this star created and how is it possible for it to spin so fast? You may have seen my video on gyrochronology where um, I've actually talked about how the star spin actually relates to its age. So a fast spinning star uh, usually is the young star, but here that's not the case at all. As a matter of fact, no young star spins that fast. This, this is just a little bit too extreme. So this suggests to us that something else may have happened. And that something else was probably another star that was involved here. And so what we think may have happened a few uh, million years ago was something along these lines. We most likely had two stars. There were probably two relatively similar stars, with one being a little bit older, and specifically this star right here, which actually started to slowly lose its mass, which I hope will happen any, any second now. Um, and this mass started to transfer, as you can see right there, to the other star, to the, uh, I guess, in this case, larger star, to, I guess, in this case, slightly smaller, but also um, younger star. And 
as this mass transferred, it actually uh, gave the VFTS-102 a boost in spin. So essentially, as it absorbs all of this mass, it starts accelerating and spinning faster and faster and faster and faster and faster until at some point it spins really, really, really fast. While at the same time, its partner at some point kind of lives off its life. And because this is already the last few years that it has, reaches the point where it actually goes supernova. And so right about now, we actually are going to do this manually, it suddenly explodes. And as it explodes, it gives VFTS-102 such a dramatic boost that it essentially rushes out of this uh, sector and basically flies out of this system and um, ends up flying to the region of space where, well, there's really no other similar star around it. And because of this, for the longest time, scientists couldn't really explain what it was even doing here. But when they actually looked at the trajectory that it was flying in, they realized it was actually coming from inside a nebula. And at the same time, it was coming from a direction of a pulsar. All of this suggested two things. One was that it's most likely that this star was kicked out by the supernova. And two is that maybe just maybe that pulsar was the reason why the star was spinning so fast because it used to be a star larger and more massive that essentially transferred a lot of the mass to VFTS-102 and made it spin even faster. So today that's probably the most accurate explanation uh, that um, gives us a pretty good historical account of what happened to the star and what happens to other stars similar to it and why some stars move so fast across the space and why some stars are so fast at spinning as well. It's definitely going to stay a record holder for quite a, a while but I'm sure at some point we'll find a star that's even more massive and spins even faster. For now though, VFTS-102 from Large Magellanic Cloud is definitely the fastest spinning star we've discovered in the last few decades. On this note, let's escape um, the Tarantula Nebula and let's also move away from this amazing galaxy known as Large Magellanic Cloud and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, if you still haven't subscribed, do consider subscribing and clicking that bell button to be notified about future videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.